right, let's see if this works. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to extract the data from your I2M dash after you've done a track day or race. So I'm going to start with freshly formatted FAT 32 USB stick. I'm going to turn the dash on. While that's booting up, plug your USB stick into the dash. Done. Dash is starting up. Now this is very bright. There we go. I'll just refocus the camera. Okay, so providing you've already set your dash up correctly and that you're recording data. So if I go to here, you can go and check. So in data and video acquisition, recording is active. I haven't enabled any compression. The sample frequency is 10 hertz. That just means the amount of data that the dash is capturing. So 10 hertz is every tenth of a second. Um, so I can go down and download the data from the dash first. And it gives me the option of which tracks. So I'm going to go and grab the data from Donington Day 2. What was that? So push and hold on that. Download. Copies it to the USB stick. If I go back then, I also want to export any um, sectors or track maps that I've set up. So if I go into chronometer if I go to export export circuits to USB first so they've been exported um, to export the lap times USB you actually have to go into select circuit first so let's see if it's focused yep so we have Donington National Press and hold on that. Loads Dulling to National. And if I go to export lap times to USB, lap times have now been exported. And that's it. So if I go to the circuit details, you'll see whenever I went to Dullington, it's done a track map of Dullington GP. And then I'd also set up um, start finish line in different splits. Now this was done automatically, so I went out and practice. I changed the uh, uh, update finish line position to auto, um, and then mapped the track. And then whenever I came in, I set up where I wanted my splits, where I wanted them to be. So I think I set up like the the first split, like down through Craners, the next split after um, Sheens between Sheens and Coppice, and then another split. Um, just before the chicane, because sometimes you do the GP, sometimes you do the national. You can only really have one track loaded. If you try to have Donington National and Donington GP, what happens is every time you turn the dash on, it'll just randomly pick one of them, whatever you're closest to the start line. So I just keep one Donington in there. So if I wanted to update the finish line position, even after I've done it, I can go back into the map, push on the top button, it shows me all where the sectors are, so yeah, just after creators, after Sheens, um, I actually had this set up on, on GP, so it was never triggering this final sector for Melbourne Loop. But I can see the finish lines here. The finish line reality is probably a little bit further on, so I could move that using the up and down arrows. So if I push up and down, <coughs> you can see the box moves, so it's probably about there. And then I can just press um, up or down to um, select and done coordinate set. So let's move the finish line. Now this is important because once you export the circuit details to the DNS software, then it loads these splits and where you have them. So you can you can view your splits. If you wanted to compare data between yourself and another writer, you could just use the splits that you've exported from this dash and just grab their data and load the two of them in. Um, so let's go have a look at the software next. Turn it off. Okay, so we've just been to the bike, um, plugged our USB stick in, we've exported the data uh, from Donington Park National, and we also exported the circuits which contained um, the start line and, and splits and everything else that we had configured on our dash. Um, so if we want to view this data on your desktop, um, you've got to go to the I2M website, um, and there's software called DNS Pro, um, so you can see this at the top, we can just click to download that, I'm just going to chuck it on my desktop. Uh, once downloaded, we'll need to extract it. 
I'm just going to clean these up. And then if we open up this folder, we can see there's a bunch of files. The only one that we really need to concern ourselves with is the DNS Pro EXE on Windows. So when we try to run this the first time, you might encounter an issue where you get a prompt to say you might need to install some additional things like Java. Um, just follow the Windows prompts to do that. Um, I've already got all those things installed, so whenever I go to run it now, it's not going to complain. Um, but on first run, there's a few things that we need to change. Um, the first obvious thing is the language. So in the top corner, um, under file, um, I'm not going to pronounce that, um, you can change to Inglés. So if we click that, we get a prompt, which I think means you need to um, quit the app and reopen for the changes to take effect. So we'll just do that. Now this time when we open it, it's in English. Okay, so other things that I'd like to set up before actually viewing the data is sort of the maps. Um, so there's a Google Maps API integration which gives you the kind of preview or terrain view uh, when you're, you're looking at a circuit so you can actually tell where you are. Um, so if we go into map change API key, um, I've got no API key in there so I can just go and click this link. So it's quite helpful they've added this to the, the new version of DNS Pro. Um, you click this link and it pretty much takes you through all of the steps um, that you need to do. So the only one we're really interested in is creating an API key. Um, if you get asked to sign in, you might need to create a Google account. Um, you might also need to set up um, Google Developer and some other things, but Google is your friend for that. Um, you, they can walk you through or there's plenty of guides on how to do that. I've already set up a, a project for um, Google Maps. So because I've cl clicked this link, it says get me started with Google Maps and it's going to enable all the Google Maps APIs um, for this API key. So I can just copy that and go to the Google Maps page. Now we don't really need to do anything else in here but you'll see if you lose this key this is where it is, it's under credentials and you can protect your key so you can limit it to your IOP address or whatever. I'm not going to do that because I'm just going to delete this um, key after this video. Um, but if I click show key, I can go and copy it again. Uh, so now that I've got my key, I don't need anything there anymore. I can do, go and just paste it in here. So I'm going to go save it. Um, and then if I go to map uh, and then go to modify create line, if we look at this and we start clicking a bunch of the circuits, um, we can see, oh, we've got Donington Park and we've got this preview um, loaded so we can zoom in, zoom out. If we wanted to change the start line positions or, or do anything there or add sectors, we could do that from here. Um, we can also go to um, the Chrome, uh, configure Chrome circuit and import the data from that we, are, that we exported from the dash. So this is Chrome for DNS um, CIR file. If we hit open on that, it shows you the available circuit. So Pembrae isn't standard, for example, on uh, on DNS Pro. Um, so it's imported to Netherton 300, um, a few others that I had set up, Cartagena um, and Donington. So now we've got those set up. The next thing we want to do is have a look at the actual data from Donington. Um, so I'm just going to go back to the USB stick. Um, and there's this folder called data. And we've got this dat file, um, 3 meg. So if we click and open that, It'll take a second to load and we can view um, all our sessions and laps. Um, so that's good. We've got some data there. Um, we've got best lap, um, other laps. So what I actually want to do is I want to do the lap comparison instead of session comparison. So if we go to map and change this to laps first and then one of these buttons up here, this one with the little orange tabs, um, list sessions and laps. So I'm going to pick the session where I did my best lap. So that was this one. And I want to compare. I'll go to the next tab, which is these are laps within this session. So I did nine laps, a 10 lap race. Um, and I want to compare my best lap against the lap I did previous. So why did I suddenly go almost 1.3 seconds quicker? Um, so let's, let's find out. So I'm going to set the color of my previous lap to something I can easily distinguish, which is going to be an orange and my fastest lap to blue. Why not? So once you do that, you'll see in the top right hand corner over here, if we extend this out, and um, we've got our two laps and we can see the, um, the difference in time between them. 
but the rest of the screen is blank. Um, so I want to create a graph um, to show me multiple values from the dash, so GPS speed, RPM, a few other things. So we have these options where we can build a view. So this one, which is a multigraph, is my favorite to use. If we click that and then right click anywhere on the screen, uh, we can start to visualize channels. So the first one I want to know is what was my GPS speed. So immediately you click this and it's, it's a nice, it's not a really a busy graph, it just shows you your speed difference between. So you can go and click at any place at any point. So you can change your cursor type, so I like to go cursor, you can also change your cursor to zoom in and zoom out. If you've got a, a mouse you can uh, you can actually mouse wheel and zoom in and zoom out on these, these bits. And then I want to pull up the, the graph alongside. So at the minute the graph isn't showing anything. If I go to map and actually click enable on Google Maps, there we go. We've got Donington Park. So I'm looking at speed and I'm looking at this left after the old hairpin on the approach to um, Sheen's and I'm seeing a big difference in speed but this means nothing to me because I don't understand kilometers per hour so let's go and change that um, in options uh, and configure the unit of measure to something that we can interpret so miles per hour Celsius PSI that's what we like see if that and now my graph gets a little bit funky because the points were up here so I've already applied that I can hit exit and if you right click um, this is fit all which is nice and it just fits the whole graph into this this view and then I can use mouse wheel to zoom in and zoom out on that view so let's look here just on the left at 128 mile an hour versus 119 I can see those values kind of fixed up here in the in the top right where I'm moving my mouse so as I, as I move the graph along you can see the time in the lap, there I was, it's 33 seconds in, 34 seconds in, 128 versus 119. That's a big difference. So clearly made up some time there. I mean, all the way through this section, you can see um, the, the blue line being my um, my best lap. Um, yeah, I was carrying a lot more speed through here, a lot more speed through here, a lot more speed through the, uh, the, the, the rest of the left-hander. And then you can see the graph starts to diverge a little bit now um, based on time because at this bottom piece here um, obviously this isn't time so I'm further ahead on this lap so I'm hitting my peak a lot earlier on the straight and starting to decelerate already um, versus versus this one so there is some way of, of kind of squashing these two graphs together into different sectors so you can view that a bit more but I'll get into that maybe if I do another video so the other thing I want to do is fit this all into one view again <clears throat> and I want to view some additional data. Speed is one thing but we've got these really swanky dashes that record lots of things. So if we go into visualize channels there's so much stuff that you can have a look at. So I'll keep it quite simple but GPS speed, RPM is interesting. Um, what else have we got? Uh, multi channels. I want to know can gears the R1 will tell me which gear I'm in. Uh, what else have we got? Yeah, throttle position sense, throttle position sensor. Okay, and then these there's a legend on the left that kind of gives you where they are. So if we go and have a look at I don't know craners or somewhere like there. Okay, so this is craner curbs. I'm just going to zoom in a bit, um, so it's a bit easier to see. So this is just on the approach to cleaner curbs. Let's have a look at here where I've got this spike. So I've got big difference again in speed. Um, RPMs a bit higher but what what is really interesting is this bit here where you can see when I get on the throttle. So I'm at 72% throttle versus completely shut here and then you can see down the bottom um, that I'm also downshifting um, from fourth to third a lot later. Um, than I was on the previous lap, so I'm hanging on to a bit more throttle through cleaners or on the exit of cleaners. And yeah, that's it. You can interpret it how you want. I mean, I'm not the world's quickest rider, but seeing this is, um, is is pretty easy to see where I suddenly made up, you know, a second and a half, so a lot um, where I made up that, you know, 1.3 seconds um, on that lap. It's definitely being a little bit more brave through cleaners and, and having a bit more speed through here. Um, yeah, and you can you can fiddle with this and, and put in more. One thing to note: <coughs> the first time I used this, I was like, "Well, how do I move 
along the graph you can like you can click um, or move the points on the map down here but if you zoom in you can also use this blue bar up the top and go and click through or you can just go right and switch it back to fit all so you've got the whole lap um, in one view um, so you can see the difference it shows you your start position is always the same starts at zero um, but obviously here I'd finished the lap um, whereas here I'd finished the lap on my slowest lap so you can see the, the, the graphs get a little bit of out, of out of sync because there was so much time difference um, between those two laps that we were looking at um, but yeah that's it um, thanks for watching